All right, so the very first thing I need to do is these humps here are preventing the batteries from sitting down on the floor properly, so I'll have to cut something for that. So I made a template out of cardboard, and then I transferred it onto some 3 8 pressure-treated plywood. Then I added some little bumpers on the sides. Uh, the batteries aren't going to go anywhere front to back because they're kind of locked in. They're, it's tight there, but they can move around side to side, so I decided to put these little angle pieces in there to lock them in. And there we go. Now this is just personal preference, but I really wanted to take this painted Milwaukee logo off the front of this box. Uh, I used a product called Goof Off and I took the paint right off. I think it looks better. Okay, time to start drilling some holes. Uh, the, the first thing I'm going to install is this 300 amp marine grade master switch. Uh, it'll be going between the batteries and everything else. Uh, I got this switch off of Amazon. Actually, I got all the parts for this build off of Amazon. That's weird. Yeah, I got everything off of Amazon, with the exception of our trusty box here, of course. Uh, so if you're thinking about doing a build like this, and you are, that's why you're here, uh, I'll leave links in the description below. And if you choose to purchase anything from those links, I'll make pennies in commission, and it'll be absolutely no extra charge to you whatsoever. Okay, so yeah, this will go over here somewhere. Let's get going. I just want to touch quickly on this cooling system before I move on. What I've decided to do here is a pass-through system where these two fans are sucking the outside air in, these two fans are blowing the hot air out. Uh, this big blue guy here, this is a Victron Orion. It's a 24 to 12 volt DC to DC converter. It's 70 amp continuous, 85 maximum. It does have a fan, but if it's just sucking in hot air, it's not doing any good. So what I've done is put these two little fans specifically to cool this, these two fans specifically to cool the inverter. three quarters hole not bad at all okay next this is the input plug for the main charging uh, it's the AC input to the uh, inverter and the Hole size is 
inch and seven eighths. What kind of lunatic would have an inch and seven eighths? Nice. All right, making progress. Uh, actually, before I get into the box, I want to show you the inverter I'm going to use. Now, it seems like on Amazon and eBay, there's a ton of these almost exact same units being sold. Uh, I decided to go with the Midnight Solar version of this box just because Midnight Solar is a well-respected company in the solar game. And, and uh, I feel like if something went wrong with this thing, I'd have a better chance of getting it repaired or replaced by Midnight Solar than I would by Joe Blow off of eBay or even Amazon. Uh, this is the 3000 watt 24 volt version inverter charger with MPPT charge controller and thumbs up to Ben's solar and battery for giving me the heads up on an all-in-one unit for this build. Uh, initially I was going to go with a separate charge controller, a separate inverter and a separate external battery charger no, no, no. All in one. That's the way to go. Love that idea. Thanks. Okay, back to the box. Uh, today I got the 12 volt fuse block installed. And, uh, and here's a heads up. Rib nuts. Aluminum rib nuts. Because there's about an inch void in this corner. Between the outside and the inside. And you, you can't... Yeah, I guess you could bolt it, but it probably looked like hell. And you definitely don't want to use screws. Yeah, rib nuts. In this corner, uh, this is the tw solar input. There's an SEA plug there. 10 gauge wire going into a 30 amp fuse. Uh, now, depending on the literature that you read, the, the electronic PDF version of the manual says that the inverter will take 60 amps of PV in. The paper manual that came with the inverter uh, says 40 amps, but the cheap Chinese aluminum wire says 30 amps. There'll be a, a 30 amp breaker down here. This is a 40 amp, but uh, there will be a 30 there. And I know it's redundant, but uh, peace of mind this corner no i can't get this thing out i i <laughs> i'll have to grab a, get a screwdriver and see if i can pry it out of there this is the shunt for the battery monitor uh, i'm using the renogy battery monitor i love this thing it's thin takes up no room and gives you a ton of information everything you're going to need uh it kind of fits in this these little cubbies it's amazing so I will get it out of there eventually, and uh, I, I think I'll just use Velcro in the Velcro in the back and just stick it in there, and you can stay there. Uh, also in this corner is the main fuse going from the battery to the master switch, and it's a 125 amp fuse, uh, as per the manufacturer's recommendations. Down at the bottom here, there's two 40 amp fuses, one for the power in for charging. The, this is AC in, going to this 40 amp breaker. This is coming from the inverter into this 40 amp breaker. Then it gets split up into two and goes to 15 amp breakers that will go to the plugs. All right, and we move on. shot now the next thing i'm going to install is this uh anderson plug housing this will be my main dc out and it'll house a 50 amp anderson plug and it's gonna go right there
Okay, I put a little dot there just so I would know when the inverter was out of there where I want this thing. Now that's the, the dot is the top. Well, this fuse block has to be below the dot, so anywhere there. All right, give it a go. So for a nice little lid, boom, done. And there we go now I know I made a big deal about the paint on the front of the box but I honestly didn't know I was gonna have to put this plate on the front uh, I'll show you why in a in a minute here I just want to show you my lights these are 12 to 30 volt rock lights there'll be another one going right here and uh, they're they're pretty good they're pretty bright there'll be also one on each side and I have a 50 watt panel going on the back of the box hence the four light switches so yeah uh, the plate here you'll see it's a eighth of an inch thick and I'll zoom in see how tight it is I knew it was going to be tight but I did not know it was going to be that tight so the plate kind of saved my butt so yeah it's kind of growing on me uh, I might uh, trim the corners a little bit spiffy it up a bit let me know what you think in the comments and uh, I am gonna end the video here just because it's getting a little bit long I want to thank you for watching right to the end and come on by and check out the next video where I uh, wire it all up and uh, get it running okay Thanks again. We'll see you in the next one. All right, last thing before I shut her down, got the lights in. I picked these lights because they're so shallow. Look, almost completely flush. All right, see you in the next video.